Welcome to Reddit Aliens. Sailors, scuba divers, surfers, others. Have you ever experienced anything out or in the ocean that freaked you out? What was your creepiest encounter in the water? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I do a fair bit of cave diving in North Florida and help out with exploration projects. I've got a couple. One is mine, one is a friend's. So my friend was checking a lead in an offset sink to see if there was any going cave one afternoon. Offset sinks are physically distant from the main cave conduit, so while a primary trunk passage may have lots of clear groundwater, an offset sink won't get much water circulation, so rainwater and runoff will tend to stay there for a long time. They're typically very murky and brown, clearing as you approach main cave passage. He's about 100 feet in a depth of 40 to 50 feet. Nothing insane, but it's braille diving. Trying to feel his way around while running a line to see if anything goes. He comes across a wall at about a foot in front of him that looks a bit unique. Oftentimes, you'll see cool patterns of mineral buildup in cave walls or floors or ceilings. So he's appreciating this cool pattern when the pattern opens its mouth and shows off its teeth and tongue. Turns out, a not insignificantly sized gator lived in that sink and wasn't happy about the home invasion. He set a new speed record getting back to the surface of that particular sink. Gators aren't uncommon down there, and they usually leave you alone, but not when you get that close to them in their own territory. My story was a bit less exciting, but pretty somber. I was doing a dive in the back of a fairly regularly traveled cave system, but in an area where a body had been recovered from about a mile back the week prior. That area isn't as regularly dived due to the logistics and cave passage geometry. It's not a small dive to get back there. The recovery was really challenging, and there were signs of damage to the cave as we swam along where the body had been forced through restrictions, through mud, etc. But the real reality check came when we found his mask in the mud several thousand feet back. It had been dislodged, along with his nose, while the recovery divers tried to force him through a small area. It really drove home the reality of where I was and what I was doing and the respect necessary for the environment. This ended up being more funny and sweet than creepy once I understood what was happening, but I was scuba diving off St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands and this absolutely enormous, like five feet at least, barracuda swam right up to me, like right up to me, and started following me around. Sometimes it was even rubbing its body up against me. If you're not familiar with them, they're kind of like giant piranhas. They're ferocious predators with similar really sharp teeth. They're usually not dangerous to humans, but we're too big to be prey, but it's not unheard of for them to bite divers. So I was kind of freaking out, because even though it wasn't being aggressive, it also would not leave me alone. After my dive, I talked to some of the locals and they knew exactly which fish I was talking about. They said that this particular barracuda was actually raised in a nearby Coral World Ocean Park, and they had released it when it got too large. So it had been around humans all its life, and it just loved people. It was notorious for hanging out with scuba divers because it remembered swimming with its handlers in the park. It was actually really sweet and kind of sad. They had released it, but it wouldn't leave the area. It just hung around Koki Beach and was kind of a mascot. I mean, the difference between knowing or not knowing that that fish used to be around people a lot could make a difference between frightening and fun. So I'm glad you had that experience, but I can imagine how scary that was in the moment. I've done a number of wrecks that were graves. Many lives lost, remains still in the wreck. Spookiest though would be diving through a large ship that was lying on its side, so easy to get disoriented. Inexperienced diver in front kicked up a bunch of silt, so even with a torch it was blackout conditions and no chance to see where the guide was or know the way out. Had a pod of dolphins swim under me and my friend, grazed our legs. The waves sucked. We were just hanging out on the boards. Immediately thought bull shark or nurse, checking if we were food. Then we saw dolphins popping up. They were just passing through, I guess. 
I was scuba diving at a shipwreck, awesome experience, very dark though, which had me on edge. Not a very well preserved wreck, but it was awesome to see everything down there. There was a huge expanse of open water to the side of the wreck that kind of began to slope off, and as we left the wreck we saw a huge tiger shark floating in that open water. My friends and I had just swam back to our ship slowly, and it didn't really follow, but if you know anything about tiger sharks, you know how aggressive they can be, and how menacing one would look in dark water. Seeing something like that, in that environment, with that level of darkness, it was the evening, is terrifying. The fact that it could hurt you if it wanted and you can't do anything about it makes it 10 times worse. All you can really do is keep calm and keep your distance. Remembering this around large, dangerous aquatic creatures has always worked for me, and I've never been harmed. In hindsight, it was a very beautiful moment, but I def didn't think that at the time. I went surfing at Malibu Pier one night. As I was suiting up, a bunch of guys hanging around a U-Haul truck kept eyeing us. A little creepy, but eff it. I paddled out. Not 10 minutes later, I heard a motorboat out of nowhere going fast as F with no nav lights. Crashed right onto the beach, only to be met with a bunch of dudes with flashlights. I was worried, but seemed like it was being taken care of. Got out of the water a little later, and the boat was abandoned, and the U-Haul disappeared. Turned out it was a cartel drug run from Mexico. Just happy they let me be. I'm an idiot to this day, but back when I was 17, I was a much bigger idiot. Loved the water and did all sorts of dumb stuff in, on, and around it. I grew up right by Lake Superior in Michigan and was lucky enough to have an old 17-foot boat with a blown head gasket. Two experiences come to mind that really freaked me out. I was out on another friend's boat and we were free diving, as we called it. Our process was to grab a couple big rocks, 50 pounds or bigger, load them up on the pontoon boat, then head offshore to drop off where the depth went down to 100 feet. We'd put on a life jacket, grab a big rock, and jump off, then hold on as long as we could, while the others on the boat watched the fish finder to see how deep we could get before letting go of the rock. It usually wasn't even the breath holding that would get you to let go, it was the frigid temperature. The driver would back up the boat after the diver jumped off so they wouldn't rock it back up into a pontoon. The whole thing was pretty well thought out and we enjoyed it. Anyway, I once accidentally hit the clasp on the life jacket with the rock leading to the life jacket popping off while I was 80 feet underwater. I was able to swim back up but I wasn't that buoyant, and that was a long, long swim, especially when muscles were already shocked from the cold. I ended up having to get dragged back on the boat by my buddies once I surfaced, and was laying on the floor of the boat for a solid 10 minutes, recovering after the ordeal. That was surreal as hell, and for a few seconds underwater, I was thinking I might actually die. Not fun. The second incident was on my own boat, alone, again being dumb. I was fishing maybe a mile offshore, and the weather was fine most of the day. Then, in the course of a few minutes, a wind whipped out. It wasn't anything major, I'd been out in much heavier weather and wasn't overly concerned, but decided to go in. To get back in, I had to go through a set of breakers, big rock walls with a gap between them that prevented waves blasting into a canal. This particular day, the speed and the direction of the wind kicked up some waves that were just the right height and distance apart that I couldn't handle them. The waves weren't big, but I was having an issue with something called broaching. I couldn't surf the waves quite right because they were steep enough that with less power I wouldn't have good control, and with more power I'd go over the wave, hit the tro, and wave in front and the whole boat would try to kick itself sideways and would likely capsize. I was able to keep alternating power and trimmed way the hell up so my bow wouldn't handle them as poorly, but it was still a struggle getting in and I was seriously thinking I was going to end up capsizing the entire time. I only had to crest maybe five or six waves to actually get through the breakers, but each one I was nervous as hell for. I made it but that was the last time I ever took that boat past the breakers. I guess these aren't like creepy as in paranormal or anything like that, but they definitely freaked me the hell out. Fun times. PSA parents, don't give your kids boats or let them pull them out of other people's yards and jerry-rig them to run with spare parts from a Ford Tempo and gasket sealant. 
Bad plan. Yes, your assessment is right. When you were younger, you were an idiot. But I think most of us were, myself included, so that's what it's all about. Good times. Glad you made it through. One time, something that felt pretty big bummed the bottom of my board. I was so spooked that I totally froze and got lucky when a wave came in and got me out of there without me having to put my limbs in the water. Surfing. Jumping off the board and landing on something large and alive. No idea what it was. Snorkeling. Noticed in my peripheral vision a massive moray eel that was longer than me, six feet, and about one foot away from me just swimming beside me. It was no threat, but scared the crap out of me at first. More than seeing a shark in the distance. Boating. Not the boat I was on, but the next one over moored in a very still bay. No currents, no wind, or anything else. All of a sudden, the next boat looked like a giant was spinning it around by the anchor chain for about three minutes. All the other boats were facing the same way still. That weekend was the last time I swam there. Cave diving and night creeps me out, not because I'm claustrophobic or anything, it's because I have an overactive imagination, and in my mind there could be anything lurking in the dark. I still night dive, but I will not cave dive again. I was young, maybe second grade, and was out on a lake with my friend. At the time, I was really into fishing, so that's what we were doing. I was leaning down over the water to take a look at what was going on in there, and a massive gar pike came right up to the surface and charged past us. I still think about it. Once my family was night diving off Florida's coast. Very bright light appeared to the north. It was odd, we were a small group of six divers, visiting a revived reef. We don't have any explanation for the source of light, our depth was 50-ish feet. The light seemed to come from something near the floor. The boat captain told us he saw nothing from the surface. Nothing too exciting, but some silver-colored fish or eel or something was swimming by me while snorkeling and disappeared while I was looking at it. It was either extremely fast and swam away in the blink of an eye or had some type of camouflage abilities. Still don't know what it was. If I recall correctly, it was relatively long compared to its circumference and skinny. Scooped around some nudie branches once, also by four sharks, but didn't know it until we surfaced. I was parasailing in Thailand and I fell into the water. There were giant grouper fish and even bigger fish that I didn't know the name of. The whole water was full of these fish and they were rubbing on my side of me as they swam by. The fish were at least a thousand pounds and they could swallow an adult human and I was only around 13. I'm a bit of a new diver, only done it for about two years, so I've never done cave diving or ocean diving even, but my area has a lot of lakes and quarries, so that's where I choose to dive. There's a specific quarry that has paddlefish, and those things freak me out when you can't see them that well. That quarry has maybe seven foot visibility, so whenever you see a paddlefish's silhouette in the murky waters, it can give you quite a fright. There was some kind of creature washed up on the jetty in Bodega when I went fishing crabbing once. I think it was either a small whale or a massive seal, maybe an elephant seal from Point Reyes. Thing no longer had a head, was about 15 feet long and had tiny crabs crawling all over it. it smelled like absolute death. Snorkeled into a school of black tip sharks in the Great Barrier Reef. Gave me a shock how many were there got pulled from the water at another island, baby turtles were hatching and crawling their way from the sand into the water. It was a pretty amazing sight, but as a safety precaution, they took everyone from the water. Kinda creepy to think that in the waves just off the shore, there might be a buffet for waiting predators. Scuba diving just off the coast of Cambodia was also rather creepy in some spots. Instructors told us the Navy had tested ordnance in that area, like the barren desert within the sea. All the reef had been blasted into sand. Curling into a ball, it was difficult to tell just how fast we were being pulled out thanks to how completely featureless it was or where the rock formations started or how quickly we were pulled toward them. It's Reddit, and I wouldn't admit this in person, but was finishing a dive at the end of the day and night was fast approaching. 
Before I hit the surface, I noticed a large man-shaped thing watching me, and when I looked back, it just swam incredibly fast back into the dark depths. Probably just the lighting, and I was tired, but it moved like nothing I've seen, and from when I looked at it, it was gone two seconds later. The mind does play tricks on you underwater, but I felt like I was being watched that entire dive. I told the other diver about me seeing it, and he said over the years weird things have been seen or heard in that area. Probably nothing, but we both never went back lol. I was born and raised in Oklahoma. When I was just shy of 15, we moved to Ventura, California. I met a classic surfer girl, everything a 15 year old could want. She was 16, had a car, her mother's VW bug, and she thought the fact that I could ride horses was a tiny bit American Indian and grew up on a ranch was the coolest thing ever. So I learned to surf of course, loved it, made friends with some other surfers, everyone called me Jethro or Cowboy. So we're all sitting in about 30 feet of water and Mako darts under us. My tanned hide turned white as a sheet. All the kids were a little nervous, honestly. It made a couple of circles and moved away. We all just went back to surfing. When we moved back to Oklahoma, I was telling a friend and my mother flipped the hell out like I'd almost been kidnapped by a creep from a PSA. Oh my god, why didn't you tell me? Really mom? That's the story that makes you shake and shudder? Wow, I dodged feral hogs, thrown from horses, charged by bulls and mama cows, and rode around in the beds of pickups with my grandfather bucking hay. My mother was a single mom, and we lived in a terrible neighborhood in a small blue-collar town until I was 13. Gangs, drugs, child rapists. But that was the one that turned her full Karen, LMAO. It's always interesting to see what mom is going to freak out about. If she knew everything, I could only imagine what she'd freak out about. Pretty much anything that moves under the water is creepy if my head is above water. Under the water, it's the opposite. Nothing bugs me. I've gone diving with sharks many times. They don't make me nervous at all. Jellyfish do though, especially in Southeast Asia. The one time I was really spooked was skin diving in the Galapagos. I went down quite deep, for me, maybe 6 or 7 meters. I see an absolutely massive manta ray lying on the sea floor, bigger than me by maybe 40 kilos, maybe more. Continued on my way, looking at the colorful fish, when it came time to ascend. I turned towards the manta again. It had been tracking my movement and moving towards me. When I looked at it, it stopped. I felt like it was up to no good. It felt very threatening. It didn't like me being there or something. Maybe I thought it was lunch. Dunno. I got the F out of the water and went to have a beer to calm my nerves. When I was at uni, I interned with an on-campus marine research hub. One of the better assignments I was put on was my identifying whale sharks in the Ningaloo Reef area, not far off the coast of Western Australia. My job was to swim next to the shark as it cruised past and take pictures, which would then be used to identify and create a record of the shark. It was really interesting how they did it. I was told they used the same program that NASA used to map the stars to ID the sharks based on their unique spot patterns. Whale sharks are harmless to people and generally pretty indifferent to divers, but they're the kind of massive that's hard to appreciate until you see one up close. I think it was on my second or third dive that we were told of a particularly big shark by the spotters, about 9 to 10 meters. They get a lot bigger, but the ones in this area are nearly all juvenile males. We jumped in and waited for it to cruise past, but this one took an unexpected turn and was swimming very quickly towards us. I kicked like crazy and managed to get out of its way, but it missed me by barely a foot. I was never in any real danger, worst case it would have just bumped me out of the way. But seeing a fish with a head the size of an SUV hurtling towards you underwater is something else. Was doing a deep dive certification with an instructor in Dahab, Egypt. We went down to 40 meters and I did a math test to check if I was thinking straight or narked on nitrogen. I aced that test, performed it faster and better than on the surface in the comfort of air conditioned classroom. My instructor was happy and we carried on with the slow ascent. Little did I know that I was completely narked and confused the button that blows the BCD up with the one that dumps the air. Basically, I was sinking vertically without even understanding my mistake. That's when the instructor came to my rescue and everything ended up well. Best part of the whole experience 
It was all on film, and the people in the dive center saw it and kind of congratulated me on being alive. When I saw the video, I was amazed at how happily stupid I looked, smiling and kicking my fins, thinking I'm going up while actually descending deeper. That was a good lesson for me not to underestimate the nitrogen narcosis and the effects it has on the mind.